Hey everyone, I'm Justin. Welcome back to Aquavit Woodworks. Today I'm going to be showing you how I carved and poured the epoxy for this lake map up in Maine. Uh, I made a video last week about my process for designing it on Carbide Create. You can check that out if you want, but today we're just going to be going through the process on how I physically make this. So if you want to see that, stick around. I think it's pretty cool. All right, so to start off, I grabbed my piece of wood. This is just a one by 12 from a big box store. And I measured out to 30 inches in this case and cut it using my table saw. I really need to build a cross cut sled, but I haven't quite gotten to it yet. Once everything's cut to size, I grab my sandpaper and get to it. I usually start off with 120 grit and then move on up to 220 after I blow everything off in between. I'm going to be using ore mask for this project, so the goal is to make it as smooth as possible so the ore mask has a good surface to stick to. Here you can see me cutting the two different sections of ore mask for this project. This is actually some off-brand stuff I got from Amazon, but it works just as good. Make sure that when you're applying this that you get all the bubbles pushed out. It's helpful if you have a J-roller, but I do not, so I usually just use this scrap piece of 2x4 since the edges are round. Once everything is pushed out and you're satisfied that there's no more bubbles, uh, it's time to move on. When clamping my workpiece to my Shepoko, I make sure that my board is cupped up. That way when I place clamps in each corner, it actually pulls it flat to my work surface. After you give everything a nice shake to make sure it's not going to go anywhere, it's time to start carving. Uh, the first tool I'm using for this project is a 60 degree V-bit. Uh, that's going to get the title text and also the text in the middle there where that second piece of ore mask is. Once all my text is carved, I have a tool change to the quarter inch down cut bit. Uh, this is the tool I use to pocket out the bulk of the lake at 0.23 inch depth. Do not ask me why I chose that depth. I think it's just deep enough to make my epoxy look nice, but I guess you can play around with that yourself. Once the bulk of my lake is pocketed out, I have another tool change to an eighth inch down cut bit where I do an inside contour tool path uh, at the same 0.23 inch depth. And that's just gonna get me a little more detail in the tight corners. Once that's finished, I run the same tool path using a 1 inch down cut and that gets me even more detail. Uh, so what you can see here is just those inside contours with the eighth inch down cut and 16th inch. And this is the result. I think it looks like a lake. Let's move on to painting. So because this is only pine and it's very porous, I don't want my paint to bleed into my wood at all. So before I do anything, I'm gonna spray some lacquer into those text grooves and let it dry. As far as painting goes, I know a lot of people will disagree, but I stay away from spray paint and use this acrylic paint and a small brush. Uh, I just take my time with it. It's kind of relaxing and it allows me to make sure that everything is covered and I don't have to tape everything off and worry about overspray from spray paint. Doesn't that look nice? Once everything is painted, here comes the not so relaxing part of removing the ore mask. Uh, in order to do this, it is extremely helpful to have this weeding tool with you uh, because without it, you just can't do it. So get to it and start picking all this blue crap off of your workpiece. I hate this part and so I'm just going to speed it along here. Finally I'm done with ore mask and this is what I'm left with. I am going to go over this one more time with 220 grit sandpaper, but before I do that, I'm going to use a chamfer bit on my router table to make the edges look nice. Once that's done, I go over it one more time with sandpaper to make sure that it's ready for finish and also to clean up any paint that snuck through the ore mask around my text. Once you're satisfied with how everything looks, it's time to apply your final coat of finish. I am using lacquer in this case because I like how it looks and it dries very fast. I think I put about six coats of lacquer on this project before moving on to epoxy. I'm not gonna show you all six coats, but I will show you some of them. And don't mind my flip-flops in the shop. It was late and I wanted to get this done. All right, so my finish is applied and it seems that I have lost my shoes altogether. Anyway, now it's time to apply some epoxy. Here you can see me leveling my work pieces. I was actually making two, surprise. And this is important because if it's not level, then your epoxy is going to bleed all over your workpiece and it will be ruined. 
So make sure that you take some time on this step and make sure that it's nice and level. I'm using Total Boat Epoxy for this, which is a one-to-one -one mixture. So here's a nice little video of me mixing my epoxy and applying some blue pigment to it. All right, that's enough of that. Let's pour some epoxy. So here you can see that I use a syringe for this because it just makes my life a whole lot easier. It helps with these really tight spots. I can just let it kind of trickle out of the syringe and I don't make too many mistakes. Just kidding, I make a ton. So in this case where you put too much over your cracks, you can go back with the syringe and suck it back up and use a paper towel to clean it. Problem solved. Once the edges and tight spots are filled, you can go back through the middle and fill up your lake pocket with epoxy. Just make sure that you don't fill it over the top of the edge so it overflows onto your workpiece. I like to try to get it as close as possible, but it is a risky game to play. Once you're satisfied with how everything looks, go over it very lightly with a torch to pop the bubbles. I like to do this process two or three times within the first 10 minutes of pouring the epoxy. And here's what you're left with. Pretty slick. Once you let everything dry overnight, you can attach some hanging hardware and throw that sucker up on a wall. I think it looks pretty good and this is a really fun project and people seem to love them. So thanks for watching this video and if you have any questions, uh, leave me a comment down below. Thanks guys.